World War II can be the greatest military conflict in history. While it was the source of huge global calamities, it was also a period marked by intense technological advancements. To overcome their opponents, the richest countries in the world invested a lot of money to develop ever more advanced and resistant weapons and vehicles. The war tanks had the objective of knocking down enemy lines and supporting artillery in battles, being true metal monsters. Some were equipped with incredibly destructive weapons, and in today's video, we will learn about the most iconic tanks of World War II. Developed in the 1930s, the Panzer III was the first medium-sized tank to be manufactured by Germany. It was used extensively during the early part of World War II. Although it was useful against many vehicles of its time, the Panzer III quickly found superior opponents in Soviet tanks. It was replaced by the Panzer IV, which had a 75mm cannon and armor that could reach a thickness of 80mm at the front. The Panzer IV was so efficient that it became the most used tank by the German forces and was produced until the end of the war. Its cost was quite affordable and could be manufactured on a large scale. Designed to be a response to the Soviet T-34, the Panzer V Panther features several innovations for German tanks, using a more angular silhouette than its predecessors. The Panther was equipped with a 75mm cannon and his thick front armor made it an excellent support vehicle on the battlefield. However, despite its efficiency, its history was marked by several automotive problems. Its 600 horsepower engine and neutral steering system were not sufficient to move an average 45-ton tank. This caused catastrophic failures, and the engine would regularly burn itself out. It wasn't until 1944 that the Panther received improved versions and became a source of fear in battle. It was considered by many scholars to be the best German tank used in the war. The Tiger Aus H1, better known as the Tiger I, was one of the most feared heavy tanks of World War II, with a powerful 88mm cannon and weighing more than 50 tons. It was a real steel monster. The Germans realized the need to have a heavy tank in their arsenal early in the war when they started Operation Barbarossa in 1941 in the invasion of the Soviet Union. In this operation, the German tanks encountered the heavy and tough KV-1, which easily blocked the advance of the German lines. In 1942, the Tiger I was born as a response to their imposing opponents. Despite being an intimidating vehicle, the Tiger I had some mechanical problems. Its excessive weights consumed a lot of fuel and required high maintenance, and it frequently bogged down in muddy terrain. To solve the defects of the Tiger I, the Germans launched in 1944 the Tiger II, known worldwide as the King Tiger. Retaining the 88mm cannon, but using a similar design to the Panther, the Tiger II had an impressive armor of up to 185mm in the turret, ensuring superior resistance against virtually all Allied tanks. When the United States decided to participate in the war, its flagship tank was the N4 Sherman, whose goal was to combine firepower with maneuverability. The M4 Sherman was a medium-sized tank equipped with a 75mm cannon and relatively good armor. It was also used by other allies, such as France and the United Kingdom. Despite its qualities, the Sherman was known as a dangerous tank for the crew, as it could ignite and explode very easily. A new device had to be designed that used water to surround the ammunition compartment to prevent explosions. With the advent of more advanced German tanks, such as the Panther and Tiger I, the M4 Sherman became unable to sustain enemy vehicles. In 1945, to change this scenario, the Americans created the M26 Pershing. It was named after General John J. Pershing, who commanded troops in World War I. Equipped with an impressive 90mm cannon, the M26 medium tank was a match for the Tiger I. Even though it appeared late in the war, the M26 proved its worth in combat. Ten Pershing tanks were assigned to the 9th Armored Division, 
and were among the first to arrive at the Rhine River when the US forces began entering Germany. With the arrival of the German Tiger II on the battlefields, the Americans developed a heavy tank to rival the King Tiger. The T-29 was a prototype heavy tank, whose production began in March 1944. Its specifications were superior to the Tiger II, with a 105mm cannon, a weight of 60 tons, and 279mm front armor on the turret. The T-29 design was promptly replaced by the T-30, a more advanced tank with a 155mm cannon, plus engine changes and an added automatic system for loading the ammunition. The T-29 and T-30 were planned to enter combat in 1945. However, the war ended that year and the American heavy tanks did not have a chance to show their efficiency in battle. The infantry tank Mark II, better known as the Matilda, was one of the most important fighting vehicles of the British Army. It was used throughout World War II. The Matilda was mainly used in the campaigns in North Africa, where it supported the infantry, proving highly effective against Italian and German tanks. Its armor was incredibly thick for the time, as much as 78mm at the front, but this made it a rather slow tank and not very maneuverable on the battlefield. During the war, the British Army struggled to develop tank models that were effective enough against German tanks. Although they expected to quickly develop their own tank models, the British chose to adapt the American Sherman tank, adding new mechanical components and a new 76mm cannon. This is how the Sherman Firefly was born. The Firefly began production in early 1944. It quickly became prized, as its cannon could almost always penetrate the armor of the Panther and Tiger tanks in the Normandy clashes. No other British tank could do this safely at the time. After overcoming the difficulties caused by technical adaptations, the British introduced the Challenger A-30 cruiser tank. The first prototype was ready in August 1942, but it had many defects and had to be improved. The Challenger had a 76mm cannon and was the only British cruiser tank with a weapon capable of taking on heavier German armor. However, the rapid technological advancement of German tanks quickly made the Challenger obsolete. It was replaced by the far more reliable and robust Comet A-34 tank. It could take on the German Panthers and Tigers. Even though it entered action only in the final stages of World War II, the Comet remained in British service until 1958. In some cases, Comets sold to other countries continued to operate into the 1980s. Considered by many experts to be the best tank of World War II, the T-34 was cutting edge in mobility, destructive power, and endurance. The T-34 was a tank with a relatively low profile, its sloping armor was difficult to pierce by most anti-tank weapons of the time. These features, along with a 76.2mm cannon, made the T-34 a highly versatile tank. It was studied and copied by Allied and Axis forces alike. The Soviets also developed a T-34-85, an even more advanced version, with a new turret, with a three-man crew capacity, and an 85mm cannon, capable of taking on the German Panther and Tiger I tanks. The Soviets developed several heavy armored vehicles, whose names were attributed to Defense Commissar politician Klimit Voroshilov. These were abbreviated with the acronym KV. The KV-1 entered service in 1940. It was a heavy tank for its time, with low speed of movement but virtually immune to the cannons of enemy tanks that year. Also in 1940, the KV-2 appeared on the battlefields, a tank with an atypical shape. Its tall turret had a 152mm cannon, a firepower capable of destroying any World War II tank. But few KV-2s were built, as they were ineffective in combat. They were terribly slow and heavy, and their shots were inaccurate. In an attempt to counter the German Tigers 1 and 2, the Soviets created a super-armored heavy tank with the design combining the features of the T-34 with a powerful 122mm cannon. 
The dreaded IS-2 entered service in April 1944 and was used extensively by the Red Army during the final phase of the war. Its main concept was to knock out the front of the enemy line, clearing the way for medium tanks. The IS-2 tanks were a major shock to the German troops. The projectiles fired by the Tiger I were ricocheted off the thick armor of the IS-2. About the efficiency of the Soviet tank, the German General Heinz Guderian even stated, for every IS-2, we need a whole squadron of Tigers. After the end of World War II, many tanks continued to be used by the armies of different countries, proving that the mechanical and technological efforts developed during the war could survive the advance of time. <laughs>